Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to yet another episode of Awkward Sports. I'm Josh, and with me, per usual, is my counterpart, Harrison. And tonight, we're going to talk Stanley Cup playoffs, the endings of round one, and perhaps even the beginnings of round two. Harrison? Dude, I was so ready to talk hockey, it boiled over into the basketball episode. And let me tell you something. Okay, in the Stanley Cup episode that we did, like the preview, I did say the Bruins were going to win this round. But I did say one thing. Unless your captain is Yvonne Cornway, one of your best players is Guy Lafleur, you're the Montreal Canadiens of the 1970s, these teams do not win Stanley Cups. President's Trophy is a curse. They don't win all year I've been saying, oh, you know, they're going to win the President's Trophy. It means they're not going to win the Cup. And everyone's like, oh, Boston's too good. They're too good. They're, they have two good goalies. No one's saying Boston's not good. They were they were one of the best regular season teams ever. They had Pasternak scored 60 goals. Both goalies looked like if they had been the primary starter, they could have won the Vesna. And one of them is going to win the Vesna still. But... What did I tell you? You know what? I will sit here and I will admit it was time to take my brackets and throw them out the window. Oh, I already I knew mine was going out the window too. I had Boston going to the second round. And just to recap for everybody, Boston went 65, 12 and five with 135 points. Both are records. They had 10 power play goals in this series that's the most since the flyers in 2012 they came back after blowing a 3-1 series lead they go up 3-2 blow it with a minute to go and then lose in overtime shout out to brandon montour and former tampa bay lightning player connor verhage because they just did the world a favor for anyone who dis dislikes boston sports which is a lot of people <laughs> I will tell you, Harrison, I mean, you know, Carter Verhage, like you just touched on, you know, former Tampa Bay Lightning player, won a Stanley Cup with the Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, and you know, was the hero here in game seven and a, a shocker, you know, I mean, we talk about the curse of the President's Trophy and teams that go down, obviously the Tampa Bay Lightning were one of the most recent examples of that. Now the Bruins kind of won up that, so to speak. Yes, they didn't get swept out of the first round like the Bolts did, but they also put together a more impressive resume in the regular season than the Tampa Bay Lightning did a few years prior back in that 2018-2019 season. So that's what takes the cake for me. But as far as my brackets and any and any of these sports, I should just stick to March Madness, throw them all out. I had the Bruins winning the Stanley Cup. man. You think, March Mad you think March Madness is unpredictable? Try the Stanley Cup playoffs. I don't care if there's a fraction of the teams in there. Whatever, who, there's a lot of people who threw probably thousands of dollars. I'm just individually on the Bruins to just go all the way, hoist the cup, last dance, Michael Jordan style. Sorry, I, I hope it was money you could afford to lose because you always, everybody ignores the President's Trophy curse until it happens again. It's a very good point. Everyone does, it seems like. And I guess. The big question is, where do the Bruins go from here? Obviously, when we looked at the Tampa Bay Lightning and they had the massive meltdown a couple of years back, they got swept by the Blue Jackets. They came back and won 11 straight playoff series. Um, that didn't happen. The Boston Bruins, on the other hand, now they just got beat. They were the favorites. They were the team that was virtually unbeatable all season long. Even up to the end of this game, it seemed like they were going to survive uh, the Panthers uh, and going on to the next round. They had a lead. They were down 2 nothing. They came back, scored three goals, uh, were up with under a few minutes left in regulation. The Panthers score one in the clutch in regulation and then deliver the game-winning uh, shot by Verhage in overtime. And just like that, the dream died for the Bruins this year. Do you think that next year the Bruins have sort of a Tampa Bay Lightning bounce back type year where they may not look as impressive in the regular season. They may fly under the radar a little bit, but when it comes playoff time, now they're ready to go and they might be a team that's going to be a tough out next season. 
precedent would actually say yes. The Red Wings got knocked out by Patrick Waugh in 96. They came back and they won a cup. The Lightning got knocked out by Columbus. They came back and they won a cup. And I'm talking about teams that like broke records or at least tied records. So by the same idea and the laws of the hockey gods, President's Trophy Curse applies. Clearly there's a trend, but there's one key difference with this Boston team. No one said Detroit was on a last dance. No one said the Lightning were on a last dance. No one had either of those. No one was saying that this team might miss the playoffs at the start of their insane season. People were. We forget. After last year, we were already questioning where were the Bruins going to go from here with their future. They're getting older. Who knows? The truth is, I don't know. I, if I had to really take a guess, I'm going to say no. And because I said that, they are, they are going to win the cup. <laughs> I, wouldn't be, I really would not be surprised if the Bruins won the Stanley Cup next year. But I am going to say no. Just so that kind, of segues, that, that kind of segues me into like a little, like a sub point. So obviously this offseason, season, you know, Bruins roster wise, any free agents, are they going to lose anybody? Is there anybody they're looking to add to the roster? They've already assembled uh, any, you know, game changing playmakers. They are looking to add to maybe put them over the top that they were obviously missing going into the playoffs this year, even though they looked so formidable all regular season long. They actually have quite a bit of uh, unrestricted free agents coming up. Pasternak is completely locked down. They got Marsha and Taylor Hall for a few more years. But let's see. Uh, Tyler Bertuzzi is a free agent. Uh, Patrice Bergeron, one of their key players for several years, is a free agent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They have... Eight free agent contracts, Nick Foligno, Thomas Nosek, Garnett Hathaway, David, and I, I'm going to butcher this one, Krejci. I'm That's sorry. Right. No, Krejci. That's right. Krejci. Cool. Uh, they do have McAvoy locked down. He's younger. That's nice. Lynn Holm is on the right side of 30 and him being locked down is good. Same thing with Brandon Carlo. And just for the record, I'm looking at hockey ref, uh, not hockey ref, the cap friendly for a lot of this, just so I have everything accurate while we're doing an episode. But that's a lot of free agents. And they do have, in theory, they will have the cap space to re-sign some of them because as these guys leave, these are the same guys who went towards the cap. Someone's going to want to pay Bertuzzi more than $2.3 million. Felino's older. Maybe well, he actually has another year on his contract. Sorry, let me uh, rephrase with Felino. But yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, I mean, if you uh, take the you know obviously in hockey, eighty-two games, a lot of physical play, it, the salary cap, the way it's re- it's structured in that league, you have to imagine you know you can't ever fault players for you know taking the bag when they get the chance to take the bag because. Cool. Uh, what was that? Here's another one. While La- while Linus Olmark is still locked down for a couple of years at a pretty good contract, Jeremy Swayman is a restrictive free agent. There were talks even around February of like, what if Boston trade one of their goalies? You know, they have two great guys help prepare for the future a little bit more. What if somebody just offers Sheath Swayman? You're a team looking for a goalie. This guy just looked phenomenal in game seven. He could have been the starter all year if all markers didn't exist. Someone might just swoop in and take one of their goalies too. And if Allmark, who really did have an insane year and was never really like one of the greatest goalies before this year, if he regresses, they could be in huge trouble as well. So Boston has a lot to figure out this offseason. Just so many moving pieces. They do have a core locked down. It's gr- it's going to be great to have Pasternak and McAvoy and all these other guys for several more years. But you need other guys. You, you need a supporting cast. Look, like just because we're from Tampa, the Lightning, they had Stamkos and Hedman and Kutra for a couple of years before they were good just because you guys can't do it alone. 
you need a supporting cast. Yeah, and I think you're right. I mean, you definitely can't do it alone. And you kind of see what the Tampa Bay Lightning have become, you know, this season. They still kept their core together. Obviously, Stamkos, Kucherov, Victor Hedman, Andre Vasilevsky, Braden Point. Those guys, you know, have been parts and the foundation really of this this team that they've put together over the past uh, half decade to a decade or so. And, you know, winning a couple of Stanley Cup titles, uh, you've seen the depth kind of wane from this roster due to salary cap restrictions. And you look around the National Hockey League and you see a lot of these other teams that have former Bolts players that have, you know, that are still in the mix for Stanley Cup. The Devils have Andre Pallott. The Panthers have the hero Carter Verhage tonight. Um, you know, you look at, you know, other teams around the league, Seattle's still in the playoffs. They have Yanni Gord. So a lot of those guys that were crucial in the Tampa Bay Lightning's rotation in order to go win Stanley Cup titles are now on other teams and are, are hanging in there, including Barclay Goodrow, the New York Rangers. You also forgot Luke Shen on the Maple Leafs. And the Maple Leafs, who just beat the Lightning, are on the way to the second round for the first time since we were in kindergarten. 2004 to be specific and here's here's a perspective for you two teams that had long playoff droughts until this year and the year before that are playing each other in the second round that's where my brain meant to go right the panthers went from 96 to 2022 not making the second round the leafs went from 04 to this year in the second round they play each other that is good storytelling. Whoever wrote this script, I commend you. Yeah, I don't think the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Boston Bruins enjoyed the script that they were reading, you know, today and yesterday. Probably before. not. Uh, but at the same Canada's time, it. you're right. <laughs> I mean, these teams, these fan bases have waited a while. I mean, a lot of these fans, especially if you look at Leafs fans, right? I mean, this is their first time since so far making it past the first round. And if you want to go even further back, I believe it was 1967 was the last time they won the Stanley Cup uh, championship, the, the Toronto Maple Leafs. And it's like, you know, a lot of these fans are diehard Leafs fans. And they were, you know, told from a young age how great the Maple Leafs are and their history and all the titles that they've won. And, and you've seen throughout their lifetime, it's like, well, where is the evidence of that? It's been so long since they've tasted any sort of glory. And now they've won a first round playoff series. And they shut down all the streets because you feel like they've won the Stanley Cup because it's been so long. They, there was a photo where I saw like a bunch of smoke coming out of a building. I was like, uh, should we be concerned? Like they're trying to do some Philadelphia stuff. Did anybody knock down a light pole? Like did they grease the stuff up beforehand? Just in, they, they, they clearly didn't. This is going to be a wild, wild second round matchup. You have the largest province in Canada waiting to get back to the cup for the first time since 67 they last one fun fact the last just for perspective on how long it's been since the leafs have won a stanley cup the last time they did the beatles were still a band and last time i checked they have not been a band for a while paul mccartney is over 80 years old oh they haven't no i mean it's been a minute for sure it's definitely been it's been a and, long um Panthers haven't been in the finals since 96. That's like right as grunge is telling um, boy bands, okay, Backstreet Boys, the torch is yours. You know, just for some music perspective there, <laughs> there was only three Star Wars movies. And now yeah. we get this. Isn't it beautiful? It, yeah, it's, it's really something else. I mean, obviously, you know, the Leafs and the Panthers – Neither of them uh, can say that their social media accounts have tweeted and we're off to these Stanley Cup finals. And it has been that long. Um, and social media has been around now for over a decade. So um, well, for, forget social media. Some of these guys are waiting for color television to, to announce it. HDTV. It's, <laughs> it's something, man. It's been a phenomenal first round up to this point. Obviously, the Kraken and the avalanche here in game seven uh, at the intermission after one, it's still zero, zero in that game. Uh, Harrison, who do you, who do you like to come out of the remainder of this round? I'm talking about, oh, um, wait, sorry. Uh, you're talking about for the second round or who's still in the first round? Still in the first round. You're the Kraken and the avalanche at the end of one. Kraken and the avalanche. Well, that, hold on. What's that game's currently in, uh, happening. Let me get that score up because I feel like you have to, right um, Kraken, there's no score after one. Um, no score after one. 
Okay, well, this this prediction is going to age like milk. Give me the Seattle Kraken going to the second round and taking out the reigning Stanley Cup champions for the Rangers and the Devils. Okay, let me just double check who's going to be at home. Devils for, you know, give me Devils in the second round too. They get home ice. I know they just gave up. Um, a big loss in game six, but they did come down. They did come back from quite a bit in this series. Give me Devils winning game seven and playing the Hurricanes, and then give me the Kraken moving on to play the Dallas Stars. I'm with you on one of those picks. I like the Kraken. I think they've done enough. I think they just, they just have to stay out of their own way. I think they can beat this Avalanche team that's short Gabe Landeskog. On the other series, uh, Devils and Rangers, when it gets down to a game seven, I'm going to roll with the team that's got the better guy in the net, and that's uh, the Rangers with Shesterkin. I think he's capable of a lockdown performance, and I think that's going to be enough on the road uh, for the Rangers to survive what has been a gauntlet of a series between those two teams. Oh, I mean, absolutely. And Look, both teams are really good. Shesterkin – really stepped up in game six i still thought he had quite a bit of a good series as a whole both look the metro is is a really good division both the rangers and the devils are young up-and-coming teams relative i know not everyone on the rangers is like brand new the same way the devils are but this is going to be a playoff matchup we will probably see multiple times over the next five to six years it's this isn't just the rematch of the 20 what was it the 2012 Eastern Conference final from 10 years ago that's not just what this would be this is the start of of what we usually see with Bruins Leafs sometimes Lightning Panthers or Lightning Bruins or let's see where are some other matchups um Penguins Capitals back when that was every single year and you know what I welcome it. This is going to be a really fun matchup. There's a lot of studs on both of these teams. And I do think one of them in the next few years is going to win the Stanley Cup. My dark, and I know I picked against them for this year. I think that one will probably end up being the Rangers just because I, I've been seeing them as a dark horse team for a couple of years now. And I'm just going to stick to that. Yeah, I mean, all great points there, Harrison. And then, you know, you go over to the Western Conference, obviously another big series coming up. In the second round, uh, you have Edmonton, who got by the Los Angeles Kings and what was a shootout. It seemed like uh, each goal was worth like half a point. It almost seemed like you would get up by one goal, one team would take the lead. That lead was never going to be safe. Obviously, Edmonton came away with that, and now they're going to be facing Vegas. Uh, in the second round, Vegas has the former L.A. Kings goaltender, Jonathan Quick. Um, and I bet Jonathan Quick was watching that series on his couch laughing at how poor the Kings performed down the stretch. In I'm that sure run. he enjoyed it. I, you know, maybe he was, but also he did win two cups with those teams. You know, the, I think it's one of those kind of like, he he, anyway, I have a job to do. I don't think he's going to focus that much on it. Like he's still playing hockey. That being said, he's going to about he's going to have the same fate as the Oilers in about a week and a half after McDavid and Drysaitel absolutely carve him up in nets. The the Golden Knights are. I don't know why they gave up Mark Andre Fleury. Or, I mean, I get it. He's old, but like they just didn't have someone to really replace him. Robin Leonard is was not the answer clearly. And, well, neither was really anybody. Like, the fact that they'd go and get old Jonathan Quick just to have some goaltending. You know, they really should have been the ones who had gone for Yunus Corposalo because that worked out, that that still worked out pretty well for the Kings. They re, they they turned it around and got into the playoffs and they got they took the Oilers to six games with them and a couple good yeah. overtime wins. I think my big concern with the Oilers, obviously, I'm not sure how – and how much it's going to inhibit them down the stretch of the uh, this playoff run, but just the way uh, they've been performing as far as you know rota rotating goalies, I they're giving up a lot of goals, and I get Drysaddle and McDavid are capable of scoring at a high level, but 
they have found themselves giving up four or five goals in some of these games. And it kind of seems like, you know, if you start facing better teams down the stretch, uh, if you look at how good Toronto has been playing in the East at the end of having to face them somehow, Dallas, I really like Dallas right now out of the West. They look really Dallas solid. and Toronto both have phenomenal goaltenders. Samson yeah. Love was great. Ottinger for a chunk of the season looked like that maybe he could be a Vesna finalist. And he could still be, by the way. They haven't put those out yet. That'll, that won't be for another month or so. So that is a good point. Let me pull up the playoff stats for Stuart Skinner. Yeah, that's not very good. Uh, 890 save percentage and a 341 goals against. You know what I mean? If he was facing you or his offense, I'd cut him some slack. But against the Kings, yeah, it's a little, that's a little rough there, buddy. So uh, we'll see how that is. The Oilers, we've always known them as a team that has to win the shootout. And they're they're capable of definitely putting up some goals, even against you know, Ottinger and Samsonov and I we'll see. I, uh, I will, I still have them winning the Stanley cup. I just think it's a Colorado avalanche situation where from last year, where like, yeah, like let's be real. Like Darcy Kemper was good enough and it was really the team around the goalie that got them to the Stanley cup championship. That was just a fast high flying team. And the Oilers are very similar to that. Not quite that, but still very similar. So it's a concern, but it's not something that you're just going to sound the alarm on. Right. And um, obviously, you know, looking back at the bracket, we both, you know, kind of made picks on what we thought was going to happen. Obviously I thought Boston was going to run the table. You thought that maybe Tampa would knock them out in the second round. I know you said, I think. Yeah, I picked that, didn't I? (laughs) I think you said you had Edmonton coming out of the West, if I remember correctly. I had Edmonton beating Carolina as payback for the 2006 Stanley Cup final. And may I just add for the Tampa Bay Lightning quickly? They had a good run. I just know there's some people who know I'm from Tampa Bay area that might want to know my stance on this. Maybe they actually don't. I'm going to say it anyway. They had a great run. 10 years. They only missed the playoffs once. This was actually the first year in which the Lightning didn't get past the first round that they actually won games. They got swept by the Habs. They got swept by the Blue Jackets. So winning two games is already a step up from the other times they didn't get out of the first round. And of the 10 seasons, six times they made to the conference final or better that's a majority of the time four finals appearances two cups there's a lot of teams that would sell their soul for that run and there's teams in the second round right now that absolutely would and you know which ones we're thinking of oh maple leaves yeah <laughs> no i mean yeah i mean to your point i think there are a number of teams that would you know it's a the decade that the Tampa Bay lightning have put together i mean you mentioned it you know four cup final appearances three in a row obviously the one back in 2015 when they were a young squad going against a you know a juggernaut dynasty that was the chicago blackhawks um but you know for them to able to regroup uh you know make it you know make it back a couple of years down the road in 2018 2019 and they're uh, in, in actually their 2017 2018 year that's their 25th year I, that team to me was one of the most powerful teams I'd ever seen put on the ice, especially from the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, they made it to the conference finals, had the Capitals on the ropes that year too. Uh, unfortunately, they couldn't uh, come away with that one, but that that year's team was just as impressive to me too. And, um, you know, the three, obviously the past three years going to the cup finals, winning two, it almost kind of gets to the point where like they got there last year and it almost lost. It's almost in a way I'm not going to, I don't really have the right word for it. I don't want to say lost, it's luster, but you don't have like the same appreciation for how hard it is to get to the cup. It line. is true. The first it's- cup means the most. It would be a lie to say it's not, but I would say it's kind of like first one, second one. Then like, once you hit like that three P it like comes right back up. Like that third one would have had a lot of meaning because then you can use the D word no matter what, if you win three in a row, dynasty, 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 didn't happen. And look, and I'm not saying don't be bummed that they lost. 
I was not happy, but you, you can't act like the world is over and no. there are going to be fans that do. And I, and I understand. And that was also another one of those weird scenarios where even though Tampa had the experience, they had been there before they were on the top of the mountain for as long as they were the 11 straight series wins that season last year that the avalanche put together it you, you saw one playoff game in the first round from them i think they scored like seven goals in game one of the first round and it was like yeah um this team's the best team in the world right now and there isn't really anybody out there that's going to stop them so going into that finals they were tampa bay was the underdog in that series despite how well they had played it wasn't one of those series where the lightning went in and the expectation was they should have won that series. They let it get away. It was more of maybe the avalanche will slip up here or there with their inexperience being in that round, as opposed to the lightning are better and they just let it get away from them. No, the avalanche were just a more complete team and they showed it from start to finish in that playoff run last year. They never went to a game seven. Uh, they were never on the ropes. Absolutely. And anyway, I believe we digress a little bit at this point. We at one point we were still kind of talking about um, for the Oilers and other predictions. Yeah, I'm still sticking with Oilers Hurricanes. I'm fully aware I had the Lightning going to the second round, which is why I did that whole spiel just now. It is what it is. I'm wrong. Sorry. You can complain about it in the comments section. That's my uh, that's my one per episode. Take it to the comments. Hey, and for me, I mean, I was my bracket was even a worse situation. But now that the uh, Bruins are out of it, um, I have to be honest. I mean, the one thing I wanted to see out of Toronto was if they could actually win a first round playoff series before I felt comfortable picking them to go the distance. But uh, I get Tampa Bay wasn't the same team this year as they had been years past. But at the same time, very impressed to see the Leafs kind of wriggle their way out of adversity. On they're, the they're a very good team. I think that was the experience that they showed in games three and games four where they were dead to right. They had really no way of winning those two games, but finding a way to win them both. And then uh, going back there and winning another one in overtime, that's what it takes to win a Stanley Cup. They showed it. They showed enough to me. That's probably my new favorite. And I think they'll face the Dallas Stars in the final to do it. I think the Leafs will beat the Stars. That's my new pick. Oh, wait, what was your original pick? My original pick was, I remember I had the Bruins winning it all. I can't remember if I had, I can't remember if I had the stars in the final. I'd have to go back and watch the video. Yeah, we'll have to go check that episode. I mean, I it's have, for me because I picked a rematch. It kind of sticks in the brain a little bit better. But when we circle back around, I'm sure I'll have to adjust it again. But as it stands today, I like the Leafs over the Dallas Stars out of the teams that are left. I think those are the two best teams out there. And I think that's going to be your finals matchup. I think, I think honestly, you know, the Leafs broke down the first round curse. And I think now that they're, now that they've done that, I think that they might actually be the team uh, to finally get it done. These Leafs fans have waited a long time and this might be their year after all. Yeah. And Hey, here, uh, here out this other idea. We split the difference on our picks. I'm not saying like this completely voids our current picks, but I'm just throwing out a fun split the difference. Oilers, Leafs, all Canadian Stanley Cup. I mean, it would be so cool to see Connor McDavid in the Stanley Cup final, as great as he is. Um, all Canada Stanley Cup final. Western Canada versus Eastern Canada. <laughs> it, would be, it would be the NHL's it would be the NHL's closest thing that they could get to what we're going to get here in a week in basketball Lakers Warriors obviously a bit, two big fan bases a lot of big stars on both sides everybody would be watching be a phenomenal series for sure uh but ultimately I just can't trust Edmonton uh in net I can't I like Dallas on both sides a lot I think that they're going to be the I think they're going to be the team out of the west this year yeah, no, I, and again, that's a great pick. I more was just doing a fun, like I said, oh, yeah. difference. I'm, I'm sticking with my pick still. It would just, I think, a, I don't know how good it would be for ratings in the United States per se. Then again, I'm. There's probably a few teams you get a few matchups you could say that for. 
Certainly, if the Oilers and the Leafs play one, Gary Bedman can say, ha ha, what did I tell you? I wasn't rigging things. But, you know, but that that's not a fun scenario either. So that's, you know, it's not a good reason to make that prediction. I think it could be good just because it's McDavid versus Matthews. Matthews is an American hockey player, and I'm not saying a lot of people actually know that. But we'll see. I think just on those names alone, that could make it a very good Stanley Cup final, but it could also, you know, be a bit of a damper for U.S. ratings. Now, I'm sure there's also going to be some non-U.S. people saying, why does that matter? But keep in mind, we're, we are based in the United States, so we're going to have some American-centric comments here, just as a heads up. But, hey, I still, I would be open for that matchup, yours, Stars, Rangers, and um, Oilers, uh, Hurricanes. Yeah, and for full disclosure, I think, you know, the Rangers making it there would be pretty cool, too. Obviously, they got a good core, and they have, you know, some legends on that side, too. Obviously, Patrick Kane, uh, you know, going for another one. That's a great narrative to kind of hone in on. Uh, but, again, this is going to be – an ex- it's going to be exciting to see this whole thing unfold. Uh, update on the Kraken – avalanche game the kraken are now up one to nothing in that game oh, seven i think it's looking good right now it, it might not by the time uh people see this tomorrow morning <laughs> you know I mean, for the record this is going up the same day we're recording it but that doesn't mean everyone's going to see it right away so um love to see we will see if my prediction pans out or if it was just a fun well that was whatever in the moment Herds all in the bottle, current in the trash. That was kind of nasty. <laughs> well, if there's one thing that we know for sure. You look at, you know, the Stanley Cup playoffs, nothing is set in stone. It's anybody's game. It's anybody's series, regardless of the seating. It's been a phenomenal run. Absolutely. And you know what? In the next episode, we will get to talk about it more. For those listening to the Awkward Sports Podcast, Josh outroed, Josh introed, I guess I'll outro. I'm Harrison. This is Josh. What will we be talking about next time? We kind of hinted at what we might talk about, but we really don't know. There's new sports every day, but one thing's for sure. We will see you next time.